Hey everybody, chances are you like to keep your mouth clean, you like to keep your smile nice and white. So, you know, maybe get yourself an that's a electric toothbrush. You, you get some floss. This looks like it's been in the in the cabinet for a while, a little dirty, so you probably you know, the new new generation of flossers you probably got probably got a picker, right? And then of course you got your toothpaste. But what you may not know is that there's a lot of toxic chemicals that are in this regular little bottle of toothpaste. So we're gonna take a look at some of those toxic compounds and uh, see if they're worth trying to eliminate and uh, maybe some alternatives that you can use instead. All right, first of all, how do we get that nice foaming action? This is one of the things we take for granted in regular commercial toothpaste that other more natural toothpaste really don't offer very well, and that is foaming action. The foaming action is created by a compound called sodium lauryl sulfate. This is basically soap. It gives you this nice soapy foaming action. Some of the problems that are a result of that is that the, the sodium lauryl sulfate is an irritant. It can cause, a, it's been known to cause canker sores and sometimes gingivitis, especially people with more skin sensitivities. It has also shown to break up phospholipids on the tongue and taste buds, which change the, the ability of your taste buds to uh, taste properly. Bitter tastes are enhanced and other things are kind of thrown off. That's why things kind of taste funny after you just brushed your teeth. And believe it or not, sodium lauryl sulfate has been registered as an insecticide and can have very disastrous consequences to fish, insects, crustaceans, and other marine life. Gotta make that toothpaste sweet. How do we do that? We add artificial sweeteners, of course. We got saccharin, aspartame, pick your choice, choice your pick. <laughs> uh, usually it's saccharin. Saccharin is a known car carcinogen. Well, so is aspartame, but I remember uh, when I was in pharmacy school in a compounding lab, we were working with saccharin and on the bottle there was this like huge carcinogenic label on it and it just like freaked me out. So artificial sweeteners, not so good. If you haven't read up on that, um, there's plenty of stuff available on the Google machine. Try Closan, shown to decrease the incidence of gingivitis and plaque but may disrupt your endocrine glands. Some other things that triclosan has not going for it is the fact that it causes antibiotic resistance and causes hormonal problems. It can cause precocious puberty in girls, which just means they start puberty at a, at a much younger age. It can cause prostate issues, breast issues. Triclosan has actually been banned in Minnesota, so some states in the United States are already banning it. Usually it's California that does that, but I guess Minnesota beat us to it. It contains fluoride. This is supported by the American Dental Association as the miracle supplement for your teeth. This is going to prevent all tooth decay and cause no ill health effects. Well, it does have quite an ill health impact. It affects a lot of different tissues in your body. It affects your thyroid, especially. If you have thyroid issues, you should be avoiding fluoride like the plague. It also has neurological consequences. If you swallow a pea-sized amount of toothpaste with this little tiny bit of fluoride in it, it actually says to call the poison control center on the back. So what do you think? Should we be taking in a lot of fluoride or trying to minimize it at all costs? Should we be putting it in our municipal water supplies or should we be avoiding it? I'll let you be the judge, but as far as the evidence that I've seen, fluoride is a, a dangerous chemical that we should avoid at all costs. If we can minimize it, eliminate it, then all the better. There's gonna be other things out there that can provide us tooth decay prevention other than this molecule that causes so many ill health effects. No fluoride. Propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is a type of mineral oil that in industrial form is fantastic for paints, enamels, antifreeze, 
So if I were you, I would not brush your teeth with it. It's also a known skin, eye, and lung irritant and can cause organ system disruption. Next, we have diethanolamine, or DEA. It's another foaming agent. It also is a hormone disruptor. DEA has also been shown to react with other chemicals to form a carcinogenic compound, which, excuse me for cheating with my notes, called, the carcinogen is called NDEA, and nitrice and nitrosodiethanolamine, which is readily absorbed through the skin and has been linked with cancers of the stomach, esophagus, and liver and bladder. Microbeads. So uh, I believe that they use silica as the microbeads typically, but these are used to clean the teeth. Apparently, they're abrasive. They they get on your teeth and just try to break off everything, right? Well, okay, that seems kind of cool. Um, we'll abrasively remove some of that that uh, nasty biofilm and plaque and, and whatever else we got on our teeth. Um, the problem is, is that it sticks to our gums and other things and actually allows bacteria to form. And then there's also an environmental impact that it causes. Um, it goes, these little microbeads go down the drain and get flushed into our environment, um, which apparently also has a negative impact. Well, what do we do for tartar control? Well, we got to have a little thing called tetrasodium pyrophosphate. What does that do? It helps from calcification of minerals on your teeth, aka tartar. The problem with that is it burns. Have you ever left toothpaste in your mouth for too long and it burns and it burns? A lot of that is coming from this tetrasodium pyrophosphate, which has a lower pH and can really start to burn the mouth. You can make your own toothpaste. There are recipes available. Um, you can check out one of my friend and colleague, Stacia. She made a video for the, our Dr. Scott Health channel here, and it uses coconut oil and peppermint essential oil. There are brands available. You know, Tom's of Maine actually isn't completely natural. There's still some, there's even fluoride in it uh, and some other chemicals that you should try to avoid. Um, I tried out this stuff called Earth Paste. I don't know if you can see that. And it looks like Earth Paste. It uh, doesn't have fluoride, it doesn't have sodium lauryl sulfate, it doesn't have triclosan, it doesn't have fluoride. Did I already say fluoride? Um, so, but, I mean, it's, first of all, let's see if I can squeeze some up here. Can you see that? It's not nice and white, it's brown like the earth. And, but right on the bottle, it says no glycerin, no fluoride from the earth, no artificial coloring, no foaming agents. Beautiful, right? Um, so a lot of people, I think this is wishful thinking. There's a lot of reviews on Amazon that's, oh, you know, this works great, cleans my teeth really well. Um, I found that it took a lot longer for me to brush my teeth it, it didn't foam at all. I didn't really appreciate the foaming power of regular toothpaste until I used this earth paste stuff. That's kind of a drawback. Um, check out the full, full review on this stuff in um, another video that I will link to up there. Investigate this a little bit more on your own. If you choose, I will link to some articles um, despite me saying that this doesn't foam well and it takes longer to brush your teeth, I did find that my teeth or my whole mouth was less irritated. It did stay clean longer. It didn't mess up my taste buds, which was cool. And uh, I have noticed that some of the pain that I used to have in, my, in the back of my teeth when I chew has gone away, which is cool. Kind of an unintended consequence. 
So it may, uh, without having any of those traditional anti-sensitivity compounds like uh, potassium nitrate, I believe it is, it somehow has, has uh, allowed my teeth sensitivity to uh, diminish quite a bit. So toothpaste. Make sure you know what's in your toothpaste and uh, measure the, the good versus the bad and whether or not you want to keep using your regular commercial toothpaste or if you want to try something a little bit more natural. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you found this useful and subscribe if you haven't already. Lots of great new videos coming and thanks again. We'll see you later. Bye.